enough. Wes is asking a question if these different types of character apply to short films as well. Sure. Um, now, it's tricky <clears throat> because different people are going to give you different answers about this. Um, there are a lot of people out there who will argue, and it's a completely valid argument, that a short film is really about choosing an idea or a feeling or a theme or a mood or whatever and being able as best you can to express that. That's fine. Okay. Um, but I think that you can tell a story in a compressed format. You can tell a story that's got a beginning, a middle, and end, that has a first act, a second act, and a third act, that has a main character, um, that has other characters that either oppose him or her, um, or influence him or her in some sort of dynamic way. Um, so yeah, I think you can have all of those things in a short film, absolutely. It tends to make them the longer shorts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but um, you and I have worked on two films like that. Yeah. So um, yes, I do absolutely think it, it can apply to short film, but it, it depends on who you talk to. All right, so we have, um, oh, bye Maria. But, uh, but, but by the way, oh. Bye Maria. Bye Maria. Um, um, what I was gonna say also is just that um, um, all of these things are guidelines, um, are, I, they are ideas for what you can do to sort of open up your creativity. Just like, you know, you as an actor, right? Um, you have all these techniques you use to, for the purpose of believing in the, in the reality of imaginary circumstances, right? Stimulating the imagination. Stimulating the imagination. Exactly. This is the same thing. Now, what I would say is that there are certain things that you need to know because a screenplay is a specific thing. A story told in three acts is a specific thing that you should know uh, that will help you along in that journey and that will also help you to recognize when you're departing from certain norms. Um, but all these things that we're talking about, uh, having a main character with a misbehavior and having a dynamic character who influences that main character in some way um, and spends the journey with him or her, having uh, all that stuff, those are just um, ways of stimulating your imagination. They're ways of shaping your creativity, shaping your brainstorming process, right? So, like when I write today, I don't consciously think of most of that stuff. It's just a guide. It's a guide to how do I put limits on my brainstorming so that it all in the end has some sort of shape. It all sort of, everything relates to everything else. So basically you can peel away from writing So I'm trying to wrap my brain around this. You know what? Never mind. Uh, I'm going to certain I am. Uh, 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 if I go in the direction I want to go, we're going to go on a tangent that ultimately is going to lead to confusion. <laughs> so let me just stay on point. Um, sure. Okay. So we've covered the uh, um, concept elements and we've covered some of the character elements. Um, uh, I know that the last time uh, uh, Celine had a question about genre, and that's germane to today's conversation, but I think that that should come toward the end of this, because I, I don't think that that's a necessarily a, a structural point. It's more... Well, I guess, I mean, now that we've had the discussion that we've had, the next point would be to start talking about, you know, where you sort of branch out from all of that, um, and... Part of that is structure, and part of it is also genre decision. So let's talk about genre, and then we'll move on to uh, some defining terms, um, uh, adventure, complication. Sure. Um, um, and maybe we'll leave it at that, because I, I know there's a bunch, but I think right. we just kind of, you'll cover this in the seminar. So. Sure. Um, genre is just the expected entertainment. <laughs> That's the way to think of it. It's Yuck. the... It's the, it's the effect that you want to have on the audience. Do you want to make them that, laugh? <laughs> that doesn't sound very creative. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't like that definition. Well, I mean, honestly, that's really what it is. 
Okay. That's really all the genre is. It's what are the entertainment expectations of this piece? What is the intended desired effect? Do I want to thrill people? Do I want to horrify them? Do I want to make them laugh? Do I want to make them cry? Do I want them to have like, you know, do I want their heart to start racing because there's so much action? Now, is that going to have its own structural elements or is that just going to be a function of language, the no, type of language that you use in, dif in, in, in describing the, the action lines and the, the way the dialogue rolls off? Or is there an actual structural component to genre? Well, no, it's mostly what you just said. I mean, you could write five different scenes. You could write the same scene five different ways based on genre. You know, you could write, you could have the same exact dialogue too and write the same scene as a thriller, as a comedy, as a drama, as an action movie, as a horror movie, whatever. Do you, is there a list of genres? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I mean, the other thing I was going to say about genre is that it's most important if you're wanting to write mainstream stuff, okay? Most people, when they write something that they would call independent, all right, they're not really thinking about genre. Um, when, it, you know, they're thinking, you know, and what comes out is sort of a drama or a comedy or a dramedy or, you know, a sort of, um, um, you know, a sort of, you know, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, a weak, uh, a weak genre. Um, it, it's not really defined in the same way. But if you're writing mainstream stuff, right, and you want to write a romantic comedy, for example, well, there are certain, um, there are certain parts that you always see in a romantic comedy, right? Can you rattle them off? Sure, boy meets girl, boy, you know, uh, boy and girl kiss and or sleep together for the first time, boy loses girl, uh, boy overcomes some huge obstacle within himself to get girl back. That's every single romantic comedy that has ever been made. Wow. <laughs> and that's it, folks. <laughs> okay, that's great. But the thing is, is that the way you would then use genre as a tool for yourself is to say, well, those are the expectations of that genre. So now I've put a new limit on my brainstorming, right? Mm -hmm. I know I have to have these things. The boy has to meet the girl, right? Somewhere in the middle of the movie, they have to kiss or have sex, right? Um, somewhere about two thirds, you know, three quarters of the way through the movie, end of the second act, they're going to separate, right? They're going to break up. And then in the end, if it's really a romantic comedy, they're going to get back together. And if it's not? Then it's not a romantic comedy. Okay. <laughs> okay, great. So we covered genre. Right. Right? Yes. So you have to know, you have to know the flavor of what it, the story that you want to tell. No, I wouldn't say you need to know the flavor. What I would say is that understanding what the expectations of a particular genre are can help you better define what choices you can, you have to make. Well, I don't think that anybody sits down to write a screenplay in a void. I, I think that y you have an idea which excites you, and uh, and you see that idea in your head. You're playing that movie in your head, sure. so you have an idea of, yeah. of what that genre is. Is it a romantic comedy, a horror film, a thriller, a psychological thriller, an action film, so on and so forth? That's the way you see it. You want, you want, the question is, right. getting that story f you know, out of your head and onto a piece of paper is going to um, involve, in, in most cases, some kind of structured approach. Sure. In most cases, not all. And if you are writing stuff for the mainstream, then you better be really clear. You better, be you better be really, really clear about what your genre is so that you write moments that are consistent with the expectations. What's mainstream? I mean, define that just so that we're clear. Studios. What? Studio films. Yeah. Okay. So then indie films would be out of mainstream. That's where you can get away with. Well, you don't have to worry about it as much. And as a result, you wind up ultimately seeing stories that, <coughs> sorry, uh, that, um, you know, simul you know, simultaneously um, can be a little riskier sometimes, um, but also a little bit softer conceptually. Like the thing that, you know, the, the, it's harder to put it into, you know, you know it's, it's harder to determine what you put on the poster. 
because it's a it's a softer concept. Why do I find those movies always to be more interesting? Sorry, I mean I'm not placing a judgment. I'm speaking subjectively. I always find indie films to be much more interesting. Is it because the it, it it's not uh, there's an unexpected quality? Is it because I'm I, there's an opening there for me to be surprised? Probably. Um, those sorts of movies aren't as burdened, let's say, with the expectations of genre, for example. Okay. Um, that's a huge generalization. That I yeah, just sure. Made. I mean, okay. Right. But also, I mean, what I would say is that notice that where, now, this is another huge generalization, right? The kind of movies you're talking about, for the most part, either get made because someone has a rich uncle or in Europe or Canada where there's where there's government sponsor sponsorship of, of these movies and profit is not a consideration or you just have the commitment and the and, and a bunch of people that are committed to telling a story guerrilla style in a DIY way <laughs> right like sure. like El Mariachi or uh, Wes brought to my attention uh, the film um, oh Bellflower Bell Bellflower right is that the one Wes you can just shout it out Wes Bellflower Bellflower okay. yeah um, check out it. I mean, check out the trailer on YouTube. It's amazing. And uh, it's on Netflix, by the way. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, amazing. These guys. Uh, and if I misquote it here, Wes, please let me know. But in, they, they made it for $17,000 over the course of three years. Right. Um, so that's another way of making a movie. Yeah, no, absolutely. And if you've got three years of your life <laughs> and kudos guys, by the way, <laughs> it's awesome. Yeah. I mean, if you've got three years of your life and you make your own cameras and you, you know, if you can do that. And yeah, those guys are those guys are amazing. Well, yeah. Wes, could you um, could you uh, tell me who the uh, filmmakers are so that we can give them props as they're due? Thanks. <laughs> um, okay, so 